Nice having you, my friends. In this video, we're going to be looking at a very important term in mathematics, and that's a variable, okay? Now here, I have it stated that a variable is a letter or a symbol that can be replaced for a number or an amount, okay? Now, a very two very important words to take note of. It's a letter or it's a symbol, and I've underlined those two words there. And it replaces a number or an amount that we don't know, okay? Now, here we have an example uh, to bring out the meaning a lot clearer to you. In this example, we have John has a certain amount or a certain number rather of shoes in his closet. Now, basically, we it's the statement or the sentence stated that he has a certain number. Now, do we know how many pairs of shoes John has in his closet? No. So since it's a certain number of shoes, then we could use a letter or we could use a symbol to represent or to replace that amount, okay? So we could say, let X be, all right? So I can remove certain number and I can replace it with an X. Now, in this case, when we're going to use a variable or when we're going to be introducing a variable to represent a number or an amount, we have to make a mathematical statement. So if you notice here in my statement, I've just asterisk put an asterisk beside it there, I have let X represent the number of shoes in John's closet, okay? So that the teacher or the examiner may understand or know what your variable represent, all right? Now, quickly, now let's draw up a table just to take, just to bring out this, uh, this example a lot clearer, okay? Let's say I have a table here and in my first column, I'm going to write John's name, okay? However, let's say John has two friends, okay, my, fr my friends? John has two friends. Um, he, Mark is a friend of John, okay? Mark is a friend of John. And also, uh, Kim is, a friend, is another friend of John, okay? So I'm going to write Kim here. That's Kim, all right? Now, let's say here we have established that the number of shoes that John has in his closet, he has X amount of shoes. So John's amount of shoes that he has in his closet would be X amount, okay? I uh, hope this is very useful. Now, guess what, guys? Let's say Mark had twice the amount of shoes that John has. Then we could simply say then that Mark has two times X. And I'm going to write it like this, two X. Okay, and this is two times x. When a number is beside a variable or two variables, what I mean by variables, it's a letter. So when a number is beside a letter, um, it means multiplication. Okay, so and remember, 2x is the same as since jo Mark has twice the amount of shoes that John has, we could say Mark has x plus x shoes. Now remember, 2x is the same as x plus x. Okay, so in this case, we could say Mark has 2x amount of shoes. Notice everything is in relation to John, okay? And then let's say Kim had half the amount that John had, okay? So we, we could say Kim have a half, one upon two of X, okay? So Kim would have a half of John's amount. Now, arbitrarily, let's say John invited Mark and Kim over for a lunch to his house and they went into his room and let's say they had counted all the pairs of shoes John has in his closet. And they found out that John has 10 pairs of shoes in his closet, okay? Let's say they found out that John has 10 pairs of shoes. So let's give X a value now, my friends. So John has 10 pairs of shoes in his closet. Then, given the fact that we now know that John has 10 pairs of shoes in his pocket, it's easy to find the amount of shoes Mark has and also Kim at their house without even visiting their house. Okay, my friends? We could simply say if John has 10 pairs of shoes, then Mark would have twice the amount, which is 2 times 10. Okay? So let me just change the color a bit. So I would say Mark has 2 times 10. So Mark would have 20 pairs of shoes in his closet. And given the fact that Kim has a half of x, then we could simply say Kim has 1 over 2 times 10. So obviously Kim would have 
five pairs of shoes in her closet because a half of 10 is five, okay? So Kim would have five pairs of shoes in her closet. So without visiting Mark or Kim's home, we would already know how many shoes they have in their closet because their number or their amount of shoes was in relation to John's amount, okay? Hope that that example was useful. Let's move on to another type of activity that you may see on the exam paper in school. And this activity here is on my right. Here we have given that A is equal to 2, B is equal to 3, and C is equal to negative 5. They're asking us to evaluate in part 1 A plus B plus C. Now this is pretty easy. As we have said, um, a variable is a letter or a symbol that can be replaced for a number or an amount. Now let's just rewrite the statement in part 1. They gave us A plus C, A plus B rather, plus C. Now all I'm simply going to do, I am going to be replacing, and here I'm underlining my replace, I'm circling it rather, I'm going to replace my letters for my numbers. A is 2, so I'm going to put 2 plus my B, which is 3, plus my C, which is a negative 5. Let me just change the color. C in this case is negative 5. So really what we have here, my friends, I have a 2 plus 3 that will give us a 5, okay? A 5. And remember, when two different signs clash, in this case I have a negative and a positive sign clashing here. So when two different signs clash, just remember, the negative sign is more powerful. So this would work out to be a 5 minus 5. And 5 minus 5, that will give us a 0. Okay, my friends, and that would be my answer. Okay, hope that that was useful. In part 2, let's quickly look at that. I have in part 2 here on my right, I have BC uh, and this forward slash means to divide all upon A. So let's just, we can always write it like this, B times C all over A, okay? So what this is really saying, guys, this is saying my B is multiplying my A and let's just substitute quickly. My B is three, so I have a positive three here multiplying my C, which is negative 5. Remember, as I've said uh, before, that when you see two letters beside each other, it means to multiply. The A is at the bottom, so I'm going to replace the A with my number, which is 2. Okay, so this implies then that I have a 3 times a 5 will give me a 15. However, if you notice, it's a negative times a positive. So a positive times a negative will give me a negative 15 upon 2. Okay, and this will work out to be, I can say, how many sets of twos can I get out of 15? Well, we know that we can get seven sets of twos out of 15, so I can put down a seven there, okay? And I would leave with a remainder of one upon two. But remember, we were, neg we were dividing a negative divided by a positive, and a negative divided by a positive would give us a negative, all right? And that's my answer. This would be my answer. Okay, now here below I have an activity that I'm going to quickly pull up for you and you're going to try this and post your answers below and I'll mark it for you as soon as you do so, okay? Just to show me that you have captured the essence of what I'm saying. So Hi, my friends. Uh, this is the activity here that I am going to ask you to try for yourselves. And feel free to post your answers below and I'll mark them as soon as possible, okay? Just to see that if you have captured the whole idea behind a variable. Here they have it. Since P is equal to, since P is equal to 4, Q is equal to 0, and M is equal to negative 3, they're asking us to find part 1, P plus Q plus M, and in part 2, P times Q plus M, okay? Feel free to try that and I'll mark it as soon as you post, okay? Bye-bye.